This truly shocking French macaroon recipe is sponsored by Squarespace, the shockingly comprehensive solution for all of your website building and hosting needs. Get 10% off your first site with my link and code in the description. The macaroon is a beloved old world pastry consisting of two almond meringue cookies sandwiching some kind of filling. They are delicious and naturally gluten-free for all you celiacs out there. On a per weight basis, they've also got to be the most expensive dessert that you're likely to see in a bakery, so it makes sense to try to make them at home, though they are notoriously fussy. Okay, now the big challenge with macaroons is how you get perfectly smooth domes arching over those little ruffled edges known adorably as macaroon feet. And no! They don't have to look perfect, they just have to taste good! Who are you trying to impress? If you liberate yourself from any precious expectations about how these things are supposed to look, they become one of the easiest and cheapest desserts that you can make in your kitchen, and they're damn delicious. We're gonna make chocolate ones. Here's two eggs. Egg whites are easier to separate and they beat up a little bit better if they are warm. I saw one crazy recipe seriously call for microwaving your eggs to the precisely perfect temperature, but the easy way to do it is just to leave them in a bowl of warm water for a few minutes. They'll warm right up. You can separate the eggs however you like. I just like to crack the shell and then pass the yolk between the two sides until all of the whites kind of ooze out into a bowl underneath. It's a little bit dangerous because if you puncture the yolk and any of it falls into the whites, you're going to have to start over, but this is the method that dirties no additional dishes. Dishes. Okay, now because eggs are a variable size and this recipe must be precise, you've got to weigh your whites on a gram scale. And no, the eggs are fine. Just eat them the way they are. Okay, now you're going to need a $300 stand mixer. And no, look, I'm not going to tell you to do this with a whisk. That'd be hard. But a $12 electric hand mixer makes this a cinch and I think actually offers more control than a stand mixer. You want to beat the whites until they're just fluffy and foamy. There's no need to risk overbeating them at this stage. We're just giving them a head start. Then in goes sugar. Now you're going to need to get out that gram scale again. And no! Look, if you really like to cook by weights, that's totally cool. I have weights in the description, but I'm going to do this entire recipe with one measuring cup. Half a cup of normal granulated sugar. Now you're going to have to gradually sprinkle that in while you beat. And no! You can just dump it in. I tried it both ways. It makes no difference. Now you're going to need to put this over a double boiler. And no! You can just do it in the bowl. I'll beat the sugar into the eggs until it's all nice and glossy and the beaters are leaving really defined trails. This is more sugar than a lot of recipes would have you use. I like the cotton candy-ish melt-in-your-mouth texture this gets you, but you could use less. If you give up on the idea that your macaroons have to be cosmetically quote-unquote perfect, you can radically alter the ingredient proportions. For example, these ones I made with way less sugar, these ones I made with way more sugar. I've tried the same thing with the almonds. Every batch came out different and they were all good. I liked all of them for different reasons. And they all had basic structure integrity, which is the only objective standard that really matters. Meringue cookies may be the most forgiving pastry on earth if you don't get hung up on appearances. Part of the fun of cooking at home is the variety you get from a handcrafted product. The Industrial Revolution was 200 years ago. If I want factory perfection, I will buy it from a factory. Anyway, I beat in half a cup of sugar. You could do less. Those peaks look pretty good to me. Now, to make almond flour, you'll need to put blanched almonds into a food processor and blitz them on high for a good five minutes and then, hmm, that's still not very fine. That's going to be gritty in the final cookie. So what you got to do is process it a whole lot more and then no, just buy almond flour. I will acknowledge that some almond flours on the market are not as fine as others, but the packages usually have a little window in them where you can visually compare. Almond flour is great for a lot of things and you can store it in the freezer indefinitely. I'm doing like three quarters of a cup. More would make the meringue taste more cookie-ish, less would make it be more candy-ish. And now you're going to need to dirty at least two additional dishes by sifting all the dry ingredients together. And no, you can just dump it all under the eggs. Then comes an equal quantity of powdered sugar, about three quarters of a cup, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then cocoa powder. I'm doing about a quarter of a cup, which is pretty chocolatey. That's natural cocoa, but if you want more of an Oreo flavor, use Dutch cocoa. In my experiments, sifting did absolutely nothing noticeable to the sugar or almond flour. It does break up those chunks of cocoa powder a few of which might end up in your finished macaroons like that, but I have no idea whom I vested with the authority to say that's a bad thing. Truffles are coated in cocoa powder. For chocolate macaroons especially, I think a little bit of salt is good, but really just
just a few grains. These things are mostly air. There's very little substance here to season. Also, salt could maybe mess with the egg chemistry a little bit, but a few grains is totally fine. People say that you have to fold the dry stuff into the eggs in batches, but all at once seems to work fine for me. I'm just cutting down the middle with the spatula and then folding the mixture over on itself. It should feel like the mixture is way too dry. That's good. It will come together eventually. Just be sure to really scrape down the sides. The French call this mixing phase macaronage because, of course, and I think that you can stop when it starts to look like a mousse, like that. If you keep mixing it past this point, the mixture will start to loosen, which will give you a flatter, smoother macaroon. The batter on the right, I just barely mixed together. The batter on the left, I mixed until it started to go loose. And when I baked them, they looked like this. People have all kinds of tricks about how to tell when you've mixed the batter to the perfect consistency, but I say if you go into this without a predetermined notion of what the perfect consistency actually is, you can't lose. I liked both of these, though honestly, I think I prefer the craggy tops that you get from a thicker batter. You can kind of test the consistency by dropping a dollop off your spatula and then watching how it spreads. Okay, now you're going to need to load this into a piping bag. And no! Piping bags are great if you need to make like 2,000 macaroons a day and if you need them to all be perfectly sized and shaped and neither of those conditions apply to me. I've got a baking sheet with a piece of parchment paper on it and here we're going to use this very high-tech piece of kitchen gear called a spoon. I scoop up a spoonful of batter and I just nudge it off the spoon in a nice little dollop with my finger. They're not perfectly shaped and I don't care. This does take a few minutes but when you're working at this small of a scale I don't think the piping bag really saves you much time when you factor in the loading phase and it's wasteful. Even if you're going to use a reusable piping bag, you're still going to waste a lot of batter stuck inside the bag. There we go. 20 cookies for 10 pretty big macaroon sandwiches. You could make them smaller if you wanted, and you could bake them right away, or you could do the traditional thing where you just let them sit and dry out for like a half an hour. That will get you a smoother surface and force the expansion of the macaroon upward in the oven instead of outward. I am drying them for a half hour because it's a totally passive step. Now, to prep the oven, you're going to need to preheat to 425 Fahrenheit and then immediately lower it 100 degrees when you put in the meringues and then no! Plain old 350 Fahrenheit or 180C is perfectly sufficient. Now, to prevent the meringues from cracking, you're going to need to emulate a professional steam injection oven by pouring boiling water into a pan inside the oven and then no! Just let the meringues crack! If you let them crack, the cracking becomes a great indication of when they're done. They start cracking, they're done! These took about 15 minutes. One time, back when I had no children or real responsibilities, I spent months trying to make perfectly smooth macaroons, and then I realized I liked the cracked ones better. The cracked or otherwise irregular edges get crispier, and I think more caramelized or myardified or whatever. They're tastier. Now, these do have to cool and solidify for a long time before you can fill them. That's fine. We can make our filling now. I'm just going to do a simple ganache that's equal parts cream and chocolate. I like dark chocolate, which you can easily measure via displacement. And you can put some sugar in there if you want, but the meringues are very sweet, so I want this more like a bitter chocolate to balance out the sugar in the cookies. Just chocolate and cream for me. I'll throw this in the microwave until it just starts to bubble, pull it out and let it sit and melt for a minute, and then stir it up until smooth. That's pretty. Now that's too loose to use as a filling, so we need to cool it back down again. You could just wait an hour at room temperature or do it the fast way in the fridge. Just check on it and stir it frequently. That is the perfect consistency right there. Pick up a meringue, smear on a little filling, find the meringue of roughly comparable size and shape and marry them together. Beautiful. Again, meringue is very insubstantial, so you got to be careful about overfilling these. I think it should feel like not quite enough ganache when you're doing this. Otherwise, you could really overwhelm the meringues. You could eat these right away, but for me, they are 10 times better the next day. The meringues at this point have absorbed some moisture from the filling and from the air, so now they've got more of that chewy, marshmallowy consistency that I really like. I love how the big air pockets in there feel as the layers collapse when you bite through. Some people work so hard to prevent any large air pockets from forming in there, I have no idea why. I love the air pockets. Indeed, who is to say that the traditional uniform dome is the right way? In the mirror universe, where the more irregular surface happened to evolve as the cultural ideal, me with a goatee is probably saying, Now these don't have that cracked, craggy surface that tradition really demands, but they're okay if you don't get hung up on appearances. Long live the empire. Now look, I'm mostly just having 
having a little bit of fun here. If you really like quote unquote perfect macaroons, and if you enjoy perfecting that craft, I think that's awesome. But it's also good for all of us to think critically about what perfect is to us, because I think these are perfectly awesome. They were ridiculously easy, and I enjoy that they will come out a little bit different next time. Like this was from the next batch that I baked, a little bit different, and still great! Likewise, whatever your perfect notion of a website may be, you can easily whip up with Squarespace. You don't have to be a master of website tage or whatever the French might say. What do you need to build a site for? Let's say it's a local business. Which template looks good to you? Let's say this one. Everything I'm doing right here, you can do for free right now at squarespace.com. You just go into the template, replace their pictures and their words with yours, and you can customize further from there. If you want to sell your macaroons online, you can just drop in one of these product blocks and Squarespace will handle all the e-commerce for you. When you're ready to take your site live, you can do us both a favor and save 10% by going to squarespace.com slash ragusia. That's in the description. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring the video. And real quick, if you make your macaroons with less sugar, they come out with more of a chewy brownie consistency. And since they're less sweet, they go real nice with a filling of marshmallow fluff. But that's just me. Let your imagination run wild. Also, thanks to Alex, my first cousin once removed, who showed me around the beautiful Westside Market in his hometown of Cleveland, Ohio. I freaking love that place.